Portions of the following program may have been pre-recorded. The following program's views, claims, or ideas may not reflect those of WSRR Radio or StylesRebelRadio.com. This is another episode of Behind Enemy Lines, your Cleveland sports show from Pittsburgh. I'm Lucas Durazio. I'm joined by Dom Farrow. It is November 13th, Wednesday night, a late night recording, mm-hmm. 11.37 tonight for Dom. Just got off work in the Penguins game. That's right. A disgusting exhibition from the Penguins in the cameraman's uh, opinion. Dom, how'd that go tonight? Is that, isn't that what you said? There was a disgusting <laughs> exhibition? Yeah, I mean, it was a... They played okay. Um, you said they stink this year. That was they've been having that was a, really what they've been what? having a tough year so far. I think even even the Penguins themselves know that right now. It's just not been good. Uh, they're just old, old, and not not as fast as they used to be. But I still believe in Crosby. I still believe in Malkin. Uh, they just the pieces around them. We need more speed and more young folks. No matter no matter how much of a diehard Penguins fan anyone in this city of Pittsburgh is, I do not feel bad for them, no matter how bad they play this year, because Pittsburgh has been blessed with riches in athletics throughout their history, obviously with the Steelers, the Penguins, and the Pirates have had some good years in the past. But oh, yeah. right now, Cleveland's winter sports team looking a lot better I, than the Pir- than the Penguins. I would the argue Pittsburgh winter sports team. It is a, this is an interesting and tough question, but I, I would I would ask what which team do you think has had the best luck with players in Pittsburgh? Because the Penguins, they went from Mario Lemieux, probably the second greatest hockey player of all time, behind only Wayne Gretzky, and then right after that you get Sidney Crosby, uh, who's been a, another generational talent. But then you got the Steelers, who in the seventies, so many Hall of Famers, probably twenty. Yeah, they Hall drafted Famers. three Hall of Famers in one draft. Yeah, I mean that, those teams were and they've been insane. In, yeah, um, I feel like. With maybe with players just having those two, you know, best of all time hockey players back to back, maybe just that. I'd say better organization overall, though, the Steelers, obviously, just because they've had such a long and illustrious yeah. uh, resume in the NFL. They haven't had any people who are arguments for the best football player in history like the Penguins do, but. Yeah, I don't know. know. You could. They put it all together every single. You know, consistency every year. Yinzers would make an argument that Mean Joe Green is one of the greatest players of all time. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> if you played in the seventies, I can't. I can't I say that you're I have, one of I have the a best tough football time. players of all time. Last week, make sure you go check out that episode if you haven't heard it. We did a wide receiver tier list. I was having a very hard time putting these guys who were wearing, who had like one face mask, one bar on their face mask. It's tough to put them in the same category with guys like. Chad Ochocinco, even though he wasn't like the greatest dude of his generation, it's I can't put guys from that far back in the same tier as them. Yeah, the game has just changed too much. I mean, especially when you're talking about the wide receiver position, like there's some guys you can talk about all time running backs and it's like, all right, I can bring up Jim Brown because he could play today, like whatever. But receivers, it's like, I don't know if that guy's touching the field because Back then, they took all these insanely fast athletes and made them track athletes or something like that. And now you got guys who, you know, are just 10 times the athlete that, that was playing receiver back then. They didn't throw the ball. 20 years ago, there, were, where there was not a single guy who was built like DK Metcalf or A.J. Brown. They, they didn't exist. Megatron wasn't playing 20 years ago. No, no. he wasn't. Yeah, I agree. There wasn't. Uh, a lot of those big guys from... I, was, I actually thought about this the other day that a lot of big guys who were really good athletes, they were big as a kid and they were like, oh, you're going to get really big and play tackle because mm. that's where football is made is, you know, offensive line and whatever. And that was just the traditional thought when you saw a big kid. Now more people are seeing a kid who's big but can move and is athletic and they're like, you should stay in really good shape and play tight end or receiver mm. or defensive end. And it's just been morphing into more and more athleticism. I think about the the uh, evolution of the game a lot, though. Yeah, as you, can see, as you can tell, I'm a football nerd in that way. I mean, that's a that's a good point because if I saw like a six eight dude 
I'm not putting him at tight end probably in high school if I'm a high school coach. Yeah, exactly. And that that's the other hard thing is that there's a lot of small schools where, you know, a guy is 6'5", and it's like, well, he's 6'5". He's obviously going to play offensive line because the guys we're playing against are 5'10", and it's a small school or, you know, the competition we're playing against, blah, 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 or we don't have enough enough other guys who can play offensive line. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, Six five, you go to one of these big schools and you can play tight end or receiver, and I, I would, you know it is tough to get through that stage. I'd say it's it's got to be so much worse for basketball because yeah. those guys are just being taught to be big men. When you could be six four, six five, you could still be a guard. I mean, LeBron's he's got that you know he can play all five positions. There's yeah, the, that's kids really aren't tough getting those basketball. opportunities. I was, I mean, I'm six two, and in in high school, I was our center. Like yeah. that's not, you know, it, yeah. it, and I always trained to be a post like, all right, I'm going to play under the basket. I'm going to get rebounds and I'm going to post up. I never worked on ball handling or shooting really yeah. until I was in high school and I, I shot a little bit, but like I never did any ball handling. I was terrible at it. Cause when I was a kid, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm big mm-hmm. compared to all my other gotta friends. I'm six paint. two now. I got, I got to pop box out, you know, and set massive screens. That's what, that's what it's all about. Meanwhile, you're like you know, Steph Curry's height. Yeah, exactly. Steph Curry, who's considered a small point guard, is like two inches taller than me. Really? If not more, I'm not even sure. I'm pretty sure he's like six four, right? Wow. I don't know. But uh he is a he's a phenomenal athlete. I'm not a huge NBA fan. I think the product is pretty bad, but but I love Steph Curry. He's he's the man. Yeah, he's he's a wonder to watch. He uh you know, obviously has changed the game. Um but Dom, I'm, bra- I'm glad you brought it back to basketball because I tried to quickly say that Cleveland's winter sports team is looking a lot That's better right. than the Pittsburgh's winter sports team as the Cavs starting th- 13-0. and 0. As of right now, in fact, November 13th, right now, the Cavs are playing the Sixers. I almost said the Phillies. Philadelphia 76ers. I don't know what the score is. I got you. Hopefully. It is. No, they, they did win. They, they made it to 13-0. That's right. They beat the Sixers tonight, have moved to 13-0, and best start in franchise history. I believe best start, maybe, definitely in franchise history. I, I'm not going to say NBA history. I don't think that's true. I think it might but be. But 13-0, when do you start talking about whether or not they can make it to 73-9 and and beat the Warriors record from 2016? How... how Ooh. How far? And I think I don't. I think it's a long way off from talking about that. Yeah. But that's everyone's question. It seems like has been. I mean, there's 82 games. They're not. They're over a, a little bit over one eighth through the season. We got to play like 50 games, I think, before we start having that conversation. But you win. I mean, I don't know. Just the percentage wise, right now, it's like all right. If they go 13 and one. And then, you know, every 13 games, they lose a game. Obviously, that's a, that's a really hard... It's a lot to ask. It's uh, a tall task. It's a lot to ask, yeah. Uh, but uh, So this is the sixth longest streak in NBA history. Streak or streak to start a season? Six, six best start in NBA history, I should say. Okay. Okay, six best start, 13-0. Cavs are rolling. Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, dare I say, is back. I know, like you said, you're not a huge NBA guy, so you don't watch much, so you're probably going to get a little quiet right now. But Darius Garland has stepped up and showed the guy that he was in his all-star season. And it's exciting to see because that's kind of what they were missing a little bit before. I don't know if it's because of the new coach, new coaching staff, J.B. Bickerstaff's gone. I'm not sure what it is, but Garland's back. He's got his confidence back. Him and Mitchell are playing the best that I've seen them play since being together. And that's enough talk about basketball because I want Dom to talk too. And he doesn't watch the sport. He doesn't watch the orange, I, each basketball, whatever. I you could, know, uh, Dr. Naismith's creation. Shout out Robert Naismith. I could get into it if Pittsburgh had a team, I think. Yeah. So that, that was a question too, because expansion has been on the NBA's talk a little bit. And Pittsburgh has been named as a possible city. What do you think no. about that? Would you? Would you get behind that? Would I get like, behind would you it? Yeah. Be, would you be a Pittsburgh Pistons or whatever they call them? <laughs> yeah. Basketball fan? Yeah, no, I, I, I could definitely get behind it, but I don't think it's going to happen. 
it's not the next expansion. Why not? You don't think the city too many uh, too many cities. You don't think the city can embrace it, or you think that there's other cities that are just better? I, mean, I just always hear this is always the argument that people make. I, I don't I don't necessarily agree with it, but people say it's like a blue collar town and basketball just isn't really a blue collar sport. Personally, I think it's the most blue collar sport. It's the cheapest game to play. Um, uh huh. So I, I disagree with that, but that's what most of the Yenzers say. I just don't think that the pet Pittsburgh is There's some racial undertones in there. I feel like, but go on. I don't, I, I don't, that's <laughs> not just from what you, I've heard. not from you. Just, this is from, what I've heard. You know. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying, no, uh, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that is, you know, basketball is an urban <laughs> game and it's like, well, I mean, I guess yeah. not really, but all right. <laughs> but I, I think that Pittsburgh is maybe like the sixth city in the NBA's list. I think eventually Pittsburgh will get one in the future. I don't know if it'll be in the next 50, 60 years, but uh, I think if they don't get one in the next uh, 15, that they're never going to have one Well, because they can always expand. How many teams is the NBA going to expand to though? Well, how much like, let's say this league goes like, on like for 2000 years. Perfect. Let's say this league the NFL's goes on for 2000 years. Am I right? They won't expand that though. Then they'll just like expand the G League or something. I don't know. I just feel like they're not going to expand past like thirty six teams. No, they'll they'll get to forty one day. We'll, we will not be around to see it. We'll not be around to see it, but it will happen one day. All right. I, I still don't know if Pittsburgh would be. And it'll well, be how the many? same There's way. With, now, it'll so be yeah, the same way with the NFL. It'll be the same way with the MLB. And the NHL will be the same with all these leagues. They'll all have like I don't 40, know if the I mean, how long leagues. has the NFL been at thirty two? The NFL's been at thirty two for wow, at least yeah, what twenty years, twenty plus. I don't think that over. I mean, over twenty years. I I don't think that they'll expand again for another twenty to thirty years, and that would be one to two teams. They're they're going to expand probably in the next ten years. And they're going to go. I, I disagree. I gonna, don't know if there's any way. They're going international. That's their whole plan. They're going to make this a worldwide league. I, I don't think it's catching on quick enough yet. I, I'm not for it, but I do think either it's going to be London or like Mexico City. I just think it's going to happen. Yeah. You don't think they're going to move a team there, though? You, you don't think they're just going to take Jacksonville and move them to London or Germany or... Whatever you think they're actually going to add a thirty third or thirty fourth team and or thirty fourth team. Yeah, I don't know how it would work with like divisions. Yeah, that that, that would complicate because obviously then you know the the Titans, Colts, and Texans are kind of getting hosed if the Jags go to London and yeah. they got to fly there. Yeah. You know, each of them have to fly there once a year. Yeah, I don't know how the logistics and everyone work, really gets hosed. I know that the NFL one hundred percent wants to do that. Yeah, I don't know. That'll that'll definitely make it tough. Um. Anyways, we talked about basketball. I wanted to talk about Cleveland basketball quickly, segment. but now there's there's not enough time to get into what we were saying before. We can, we can do we can do do a long segment. Commercial? Do a long segment. Take this one long. Yeah, All right, we'll do that. We'll go long. Um. So we talked about Cleveland a little bit and the Cavs, and you know we'll get back to football it is football season once once basketball heats up a little more maybe Don will watch it more and we'll talk about that later in the year but I'm a mad right man. now still in the heart part of NFL season and this week the Browns had a bye week we didn't have to I didn't have to watch it it was the most relaxing week I've had in in 8 weeks actually or 9 weeks wow. however many weeks they they've played like I didn't really even watch football. I actually went to the gym at like 1.30 and just like kind of had some of the games on my phone and, you know, relaxed and just did my stuff and like wasn't overly invested. And I was like, man, this is nice. Like, I I can't watch the Browns anymore. And now I, I'm in a pickle because I have tickets to the Browns Thursday night game against, against the Steelers on uh, November 21st which is a week Next from week. tomorrow when we're recording this. Um, and I also have tickets to the Browns Steelers game here in Pittsburgh. And those ones are really good tickets. Those ones are second row. I'm definitely going to that mm. one, but I paid for that one. The other one I'm getting for free, but I don't even know if I want to go Dom. I, I mean, you mentioned before we started recording, like you think the Steelers are 
Super Bowl contenders officially now. Russ is officially back, yep. in your opinion, being 3-0 and and beating yep. Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to go. And it's not even – and it's not just because they're playing the Steelers, who you would think are Super Bowl contenders. It's because I, I'm not – because you're scared. Excited by them. I'm no – if, if, if it was anyone – I would not be excited. But but don't you want to see Russ? I mean, forget no, that. No, I don't a, want to see Russ. <laughs> forget that really? he's a Steelers fan. He's he's an NFL legend. You, Russ he, is a Steelers he fan. He has some serious like recency bias because yeah, his his years with the Broncos were awful. His last season or two at the Seahawks wasn't great either. But he was he was a phenomenal quarterback. Yeah, seeing seeing him once will be cool because he's. You know, a guy who may or may not be a Hall of Famer, but he's definitely in the conversation. And seeing Jameis will be really cool because yeah. I love Jameis Winston. I've been a big Jameis Winston backer for years. Yeah. But do I want to see it twice in three weeks? It is. And be there twice in three weeks. Because, you know, going to an NFL game is like a big commitment, just like time-wise and energy-wise. Yeah. I mean, maybe that maybe that makes me sound old. Like I'm like I have to put my energy into it, and then I'll be drained for the. That's gonna take up my whole day, pretty much. It really does. You know, going to an NFL game. Like I don't know if I want to put that effort and that um, emotional uh, investment in in this game. Yeah, you, I mean, you were saying before we record, you said you get more mad if if your team loses in person than watching on television. Yes, I don't 100%. agree with that one. Now I all now. Maybe it's because the stakes are higher, like, and it it makes it even better too when they play good and they win. You know, then it then being surrounded by you know sixty thousand Browns fans and doing the here we go brownies, here we go. Ooh, ooh. There's nothing that beats that. There's nothing that beats that. And I think it's Huntington Bank Stadium now hmm. on the lake on the lakefront. You know, bundled up, seeing the Brownies win a game in person. Walking out of the Muni lot to go to the game when it's when you're feeling good, there's nothing like mm-hmm. that. But, but when they when lose. they lose, it's sa- it is like it's the factory of sadness for a reason. Like you can feel it in the air, like it just brings you down. And you're like, oh man, like look at these seventy thousand. P- I, I bumped it up now for the sad ones. I said sixty thousand before. <laughs> look at the seventy thousand miserable human beings that are here and just had their Sunday ruined. Like for some reason. Being around that makes it more for me, and it makes me more invested. Whereas you said you get more upset when you're watching on TV. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but when I'm there, I'm just like, ah, it is what it is. Good game. You're taking in the, the sights. Yeah, I'm like, well, it is what it is, because I'm not like seeing the discourse. Like I'm on Twitter during the games. I'm seeing all these people. What was Minka doing there? What was Broderick Jones doing there? It's like. They get me fired up a little bit. So I think at the end of the game, uh, when, when I'm watching on television, it's just got me. If they lose, it's got me pissed. But luckily, Steelers haven't been losing too much. Four-game win streak, 7-2. and two, Like Luke has said, Super Bowl contenders. I don't know about that yet, Chief. I think you gotta you gotta slow down. You you better pump the brakes. You said I'm telling you. they're entering their gauntlet a week or two ago. Yep. And this was obviously the first test. It was of a gauntlet. gauntlet. And it was a big one. It was, it was a big one. It was playoff football. It was playoff yeah, football. And it they really, proved that they I don't got know it. about that, but it, it is. I mean, those are two playoff teams. The caliber of football that was being played, it was football. And, and that, that's the type of football that the Steelers need to keep playing. Uh, people were complaining about the defense. They let up 27 points, but I think the defense played really well. Um, Considering yeah, I don't think anyone Jane has to Daniels worry about the defense. Has been doing. Yeah, but now we got Russ. He's got the deep ball back. And now he's got Mike Williams. I mean, it's all just coming together right now for the Steelers. I'm very That's excited. Other... This is peak excitement <laughs> for me right now in the season. I can tell you're giddy. It's in your voice. <laughs> I mean, I just think Pittsburgh might be going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you got the Chiefs. You got the Bills. I don't know. Yeah, I think you got. There's too much firepower in the AFC. I think this week. They play the Ravens. I think this week biggest will be game of the year. their biggest test of yep. the year. 100%. Um, because the Commanders are good, but they're an NFC team, and you know they won't. You won't see them till the Super Bowl, and obviously, you know it's whatever. But he's still a rookie quarterback. He's playing great, but they're not like a proven, proven team. Ravens 
absolutely proven uh, regular season team. And, and what, obviously what's, haven't what's done Lamar's, too much in the playoffs. What's Lamar's record against the Steelers? Two and four. He's two and four against the Steelers. Mike Tomlin's yes, but right got this now guy's they just number. they look like a juggernaut. And what, what is, I'm getting at is the, right now the Ravens look like a juggernaut. And what is the Ravens secondary? Those boys are weak. That defense is weak. George Pickens is going to go off. He's going to have a hundred, over a hundred yards. He's going to have six receptions. You can book that one. You can take it to the bank. Pittsburgh Steelers are beating the Baltimore Ravens this weekend. There's Dom's bold hot take lock of the week already. 216-859-8699. This is Behind Enemy Lines. Let us know what you think about the Steelers Ravens this week. Well, by the time you'll hear this, it'll already be over. Let us know what the score was. The next time you're hanging out with your buds, why not reach down into your pants and whip it out for them? Let them take a good look at the live 365 app streaming WSRR Radio 24-7, 365. Download in your app store today. Welcome back. This is WSRR Radio, and this is Behind Enemy Lines, brought to you by WSRR Radio, your Cleveland sports talk show from Pittsburgh. WSRR Radio is nationally local, meaning we play your local bands nationally in this segment of the show is brought to you by genericclothes.com. Nobody cares about the details. Nobody cares about the details. Let me try that again. Get to the point at genericclothes.com. Don't sell out to big brand clothing empires and their prices. Make a statement at their expense with genericclothes.com. Dom, I found a um, shirt this week that, you know, this this kind of ad read reminded me of. It wasn't a big brand clothing. It was a small TikTok shop find that I had. And you know the the classic painting of dogs playing poker? Uh-huh. I I bought a shirt this week of it was just Snoopy and his five cousins or whatever it is and they're all playing poker and I'm so stoked on it. I think that I think Snoopy is my number one guy recently. I'm fully on the Snoopy train. Yeah, I've never been a huge Snoopy guy myself. I I don't know what it is about him. He's just he's so He's multifaceted chill. and he looks so chill. Yeah. He doesn't he calls speak to me. though. He's, dude, man of few words. That's that's the chillest part about it. But he also he also has like a great imagination. He goes outside and plays as the Red Baron. He's playing like he's on a, a plane shooting down World War II Nazis or something like that. Yeah, that is actually pretty cool. I do I do like it when he's it's does pretty that. dope, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I do like that. That's awesome. He's badass. I'm uh, um, not a big fan of the bird he's got with him, Woodstock. I like his name, but... What's wrong with Woodstock? He's weird looking. He's what kind chill. Of bird is that? He's a, he's a Tweety Bird. He's whatever, whatever Tweety Bird is from Looney Tunes, I would think. A yellow bird. Right? <laughs> Maybe. Yellow bird, exactly. Canary, something like that. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Canary. I think we broke up there a little bit. Another... Remote recording today from Behind Enemy Lines, November 14th. We are recording on it started on November 13th. It's now November 14th. That's right. Um, so it is officially Thursday night, Thursday morning for us. Um, right now the Raiders and Dolphins play on Thursday night ba- Thursday night baseball. There we go. Thursday night football, tomorrow night, tonight, technically, whatever, on Amazon Prime. But who are either say? of those teams people you want to watch? I'm sorry. Raiders and Dolphins. No. Is that no. not who plays on Thursday? Commanders and Eagles. Tonight. Commanders and Eagles. Who yeah. plays on Thursday night? Commanders and Eagles. Commanders and Eagles, you just told me. <laughs> Raiders and Dolphins play at some point, right? I don't know. <laughs> Commanders and yes, Eagles, that's Raiders, a good game. The Raiders and Dolphins play on Sunday. Okay, Sunday. At 1 I must have. I got my wires crossed. <laughs> I'm glad that you said that because there's so many primetime games around this time of the year and like to the end of the year that are so useless to watch. I feel like they are games like that, like the Raiders and Dolphins. Like Dolphins are decent, but Tua was out, and now, you know, you don't know if they're really going to find their way to the playoffs. Like there's always games like that where it's it's two teams that don't matter, and I guess that you rather – would you rather have a primetime game of two teams that are bad, but it'll be a closer game – or one team that's good and one team that's bad and it's a blowout. 
I guess it's for the closer game, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. You always just want to see a great Which I game. guess that's why they do it. But I feel like you very rarely get a primetime game that matters near the end of the year. Am but, I wrong? But, but, Especially on Thursday night. They flex. They flex games. But yeah, Thursday night, they, they never flex those. And that's when they can be really bad. But I think this week, Commanders-Eagles, I think this one is a really good game. And this one could determine. Yeah, NFC East matchup. This could determine the division. Yeah, the two go best big teams way. in the division. 100%. Which, at the beginning of the year, you probably wouldn't have said the Commanders. But obviously, as we've talked about, Jaden Daniels has stepped up and played great in his rookie season. Eagles were up there, but, you know, we've we've talked about the Cowboys, and this week, Dak, uh, they announced that he'll have surgery and be out for the rest of the year. Cooper Rush is going to be running the ship in Dallas, so we don't have to worry about the Cowboys for the rest of the year, right, in making anything happen? No, they're going to be horrible. Their season's over. They scored six points. Uh, Just two days ago, the Dallas Stars scored seven points against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So that just tells you everything you need to know. The Cowboys' wow. offense is awful when a hockey team in town is outscoring them. Uh, but but Eagles versus Commanders, this game's in Philadelphia. There's three and a half point favorites. Over under is forty eight and a half. I think that's pretty high for teams that. I mean, I guess the Eagles' weakness has been their defense, but I just I just don't see this one being a high scoring game. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that. They both have high-powered offenses, though. They have two of the best, you know, the most electrifying players right now in the league. And Saquon, who's found his second life in Philadelphia and is hurtling guys backwards and making plays that he's been making his whole career, kind of. Um, Especially like he used to his rookie year. I feel like he's really getting back to, like, Mm -hmm. his top form. I feel like people kind of almost slept on him a little bit when they went to the Eagles. But now he's fully, you know... He he was worth the money that they paid him, which a lot of people we've talked about people not paying running backs. He deserves it. He deserves all the money he can get. And Jaden Daniels, who, I mean, like we keep talking about, he's the rookie of the year. I think he won Pepsi Rookie of the Week seven of nine weeks. Um, and I don't know whether or not he won it this past week. I don't know if the voting's still going on, whatever. But I don't see why it shouldn't be. What'd you say the lines at for over under forty eight something? Forty eight and a half. That's right. Yeah. I would take the over on that. I got to go the under. I mean, this, what was the Steelers and Commanders score? It was 28 to 27, right? Yes. Yep. And I think that the Steelers offense is a little bit worse than the Eagles right now. And the Steelers defense is much better than the Eagles. So I would go over. Okay. I like your logic there, but what you about like that? You like that? What about the spread? I see though? you rubbing that chin. <laughs> what about the spread though? Do the Eagles cover three What's and a spread? half? The Eagles See, cover the three. Tom, um, we shouldn't even talk about this because the game is Thursday night. This comes out on Monday. And we're just gonna sound like idiots. You're right. One of us. We're either will. gonna be right, and everyone's like, "Oh man," or like, "Yeah, they got it right." But obviously, that was gonna happen because it did happen. Or we're gonna be totally off base and sound like idiots. Well, I'll take the Eagles. What's the spread? Three and a half. <laughs> Three and a half. They're minus three and a half. Mm-hmm. It's in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I'll take that too. Sure. Okay. Now let's talk I, about uh, uh, let's talk about Caleb Williams, another rookie quarterback. They fired their offensive coordinator. No, it's not over. I think <laughs> I think he's still a really good quarterback, but he's been struggling lately. His body language is poor. His offensive line doesn't help him. They have phenomenal wide receivers. I don't understand why they draft a Roma Dunze. They could have used somebody at, at the offensive line, and now they fired their offensive coordinator. Uh, the season's over for them, 100%. But Caleb Williams, he, he, he's he got a bright future, I think. Yeah, it's actually funny you brought up the Bears and Caleb Williams because I just saw a video, a TikTok. Of course, I have to bring up the TikToks that I saw this week on this show all the time. Um, I saw a TikTok just today that was, talking about the Bears and the, the cycle that they've gotten themselves into. And it started, I believe, in 2014 was the year. They had a GM and a coach. and the, Or excuse me, they hired a new GM, but the old coach was there. And then the GM brought in a quarterback that the coach didn't like. So then they brought in a new coach, but the coach didn't like the court, whatever. It's this long thing of firing coaches, 
and having them work with quarterbacks that they don't like. It happened with Jay Cutler. It happened with Mitch Trubisky. It happened with Justin Fields. Now another coach is being fired in Chicago. Is it? Are they just like a bad organization overall? It seems like they can't get everything on the right track between GM, quarterback, GM, coach, quarterback, and the rest of the team. You know? Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. I uh, I I don't know if <laughs> if that's the right move. <laughs> Put there. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, for a second I didn't think I was recording, so I freaked out a little bit. Oh, um, good lord! But we are recording. We're still here behind enemy lines. The number one sports talk show in Cleveland from Pittsburgh. <laughs> thank you, thank you for giving, <laughs> thank you for giving us the background of who and where we are. Um, I think Chicago's fucked. I think they're done for. Um, Dom, if I was going on a flight, what would you say to me? If I was traveling to Hawaii. What do you mean? If I was going to Hawaii tomorrow on a flight, what would you say to me? See, uh, safe travels, have a good trip, something like that. Safe travels, have a, would you say have a safe flight? Hmm. I don't know if I've ever said that. I, I hear that all the time, have a safe flight. I think that might be the dumbest thing you can tell someone. As if me... One of 80 passengers on a Delta flight has any control of whether or not yeah. this plane really takes off and lands safely. As long as I don't, you know, do an act of terrorism, right? <laughs> I think is, just... that, is that what people are telling you when they say have a safe flight? Like, hey, don't, um, you know, hold the plane hostage, please. Yeah, I think that is what they're saying, actually. That's pretty much the only way that you can't get you can control whether or not you have a safe flight, right? Yeah, I mean, have you ever heard of like people like flying out of their chairs in planes? Like not having their seatbelt on? <laughs> Maybe that's what they're talking about. <laughs> no, when do people fly out of their chairs? You've never in heard planes? of that? Like people can die from that. Like if you don't have your seatbelt on, you hit like turbulence, your body's going boom, hitting the top of the you're hitting the the top of the ceiling. You're in the ceiling. I've never had that bad of neck. turbulence. I, yeah, I guess wear your seatbelt. That's the other. When yeah, someone says have a safe put your flight, it's on. A, put your seatbelt on. B, don't be a terrorist. Right? I think that's, that's it. it. One and two. Don't say, I, we talk about this every week. Don't say boom in the airport. Don't say boom. Someone did that. Someone <laughs> saw the Costco guys in the airport and yelled boom. Yeah, going through TSA, right? Yep. Which you should never yeah, be saying. I, I did notice that Big AJ and Big Justice were uh, were spotted in the airport. Can't go. Rizzler was this week without too, talking but about him again. You you said you didn't want to talk about him going into this week. You were the one that brought him up. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't so, want to talk about him. I always want to talk about him. I you said, always want to talk about I said him. There but was you said nothing. there was a lack of content. I said we, there's nothing. Week. There's nothing we can talk about him. And then it hit me. You just you just brought it, it always up to me. it always circles back somehow. Always ties back the AJ and Big Justice and the Rizzler. So so have a safe flight, Dom. Is that I feel like that's a really like white guy saying, isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's a very <laughs> have a safe travels. Have a safe flight. You know what I, I saw hate? a TikTok again the other day. A TikTok about like what just exclusively white guy sayings are. And I have a list of them here. And let me see. Let me know if you uh, if you add anyone. Let's hear that you can think of. Rattle Walker. But no more Mister Nice Guy. That's a good one, yep. right? Yep. You know when you're getting upset. Yep. It's like all right. Okay. I'm buddy. locking in. All right, buddy. Okay, buddy. That's another good one. Okay, buddy. <laughs> that one's pretty much any use of bud, buddy, or bud, or buddy. Yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. Champ. Any use of champ. Hoss. Um, when you see it, when you see a sweet treat and you're at like a party or something, you go, oh, well, don't mind if I do. Mm -hmm. And you, that's a pretty good one, right? You wiggle your finger in front of it. You're like, Ooh, <laughs> you put your hand up to your mouth. Ooh, well, don't mind if I do. And you mm -hmm. kind of give a little sparkle finger as you go in for it. That passes. That's a pretty good one. How about if you see someone who's upset and, and you say, you're not a happy camper. Oh yeah. That's, that's kind of a throwback one, right? Yeah, you don't hear that, that one too like often. 80s. That one's kind of falling off. That was an 80s sitcom term. Yeah, I like that one. That one passes. What else you got? 
I got sorry to rain on your parade. Yeah, that's another one you don't hear too often nowadays. Yeah, I feel like all a lot of them have like some backstory of why people started saying them. Like it's like, oh, parades got raided on a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> just when you're when you're in public and you're trying to move somewhere and someone's in front of you and you say, hey, let me squeeze by you. Yeah, that one. What do you think of that? That one I might have used. Right, that's the first I, one I think yeah, I may have let used. Let me squeeze before. by you. Just, just squeeze by here. We we I remember in high school there was one girl who would instead of doing that I don't even remember who it was now but I remember it really pissed off one of my friends once she was trying to you know scooch by which is another white guy saying scooch by and instead of saying like excuse me or let me squeeze by she said honk honk yeah I, like she was a car I hate that in traffic I hate that isn't that bad that's the worst thing I've ever heard that one kind of segues into my next one not to toot my own horn. You know, yeah. when you're when you're uh, when you're bragging about something. Yeah, I don't like that one, though. And then this one's pretty much exclusively Midwestern. I don't know if you've heard this in York, but Ope. Oh, you ever hear that? Like, oh, oh, excuse mm. me. Like you drop something. Uh, yeah, like, oh, definitely use that. Or like, oh, you almost run into someone. Oh, I feel like, like that's a big Ohio thing. No, I feel like that that transcends. Yeah. Race. Yeah. I heard that that was a Midwestern thing. Really? Oh, man. I, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh let me oh yeah uh, that's what i've heard before maybe 216-859-8699 let us know if you've ever heard oh outside of the midwest wind down your night or start your morning off with lo-fi wake up on wsrr radio weekdays from 3 a.m to 6 a.m Behind Enemy Lines on WSR Radio is back. Thank you for joining us. New episodes, if you're listening to this on Rerun, on Mondays at 10 a.m. We're part of your morning drive here on WSRR with Strictly Strict at 8 and the Grab Bag at 9. So make sure you're listening to new episodes on Mondays at WSRR of this show and reruns on every other day or anywhere you get your podcast. This last ep- uh, last segment of the show is brought to you by Hellbender Vinyl. Hellbender is Pittsburgh's first and only custom vinyl record pressing plant. It's one of America's most trusted record pressing plants, and they are hellbent on quality, hellbent on service, hellbendervinyl.com right here in Pittsburgh. As you're back on Behind Enemy Lines, your Cleveland sports show from Pittsburgh, I feel like Dom now, I'm just giving full background of who we are what Let's we're go. talking about, what this show is. Let's go. Just giving as much context clues as possible. Just pump the station right up. Down. Let's pump the station. Let's pump the show. This is the number one show out there. Uh, behind enemy lines. <laughs> we're just, we're just we're having a good time here. out here. Dom, me and, me and you are both descendants of Italian immigrants, correct? Yeah, that's correct. We are both Italian Americans. Yeah. Second, third generation. Yep. I have an issue with the fact that Italian American discrimination may be at an all time high right now in America. Well, is that true? No, not, <laughs> not an all time high. high. The highest it's been in 60 years, probably. Maybe. No, not probably like, yeah, 40 years. Yeah. You think it was higher in the 80s? Probably. Yeah. I mean, Italians were like the most hated, one of the most hated people. In the early 1900s, I mean, 80s, I guess, yeah, I th- more wasn't as bad, but they're still, you know, you watch like television shows or movies from back then, like the, um, they just they just use words that now they they people use jokes and it doesn't offend Italians really, but uh, back then it probably did. Oh yeah, definitely. I think that like it's crazy that they just make like open mob jokes about Italians now, like. I, I've heard it on on a hundred like stand up sessions that Italians are the last people you can openly be. They say racist, but you know it's not really a race. But you know, discriminatory against. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, whatever. Go make a pizza. Like, what the hell is that? Come on now. As as the 
as the grandson of an Italian in- immigrant, I-, I get offended by that. But you were saying I, we were talking about it in the break, like it's the only people you can like dress up as for Halloween. Right? Like you can like, like go wearing like a sweatsuit and like gold chain. Which I, I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, about Halloween was a couple weeks ago and I keep seeing like, oh, Tony Soprano and mob boss costume. And they're just dressed in, you know, sweatsuits. Making what the hell is joke, that? Making a joke out of Slick our Slick back hair, you know, smoking a cigar, drinking out of a out of a whiskey glass like that, you know, trying to be a mob Italian. Like, I'm glad that a, a very dark part of my culture is your costume. No? <laughs> I mean, I think the people, the way people view Tony Soprano is, is bad. People are like, oh, yeah. he's so sick. Yeah, he obviously was a really, really bad guy in that show. And everyone's like, God, Tony's the He's man. so cool. <laughs> Which I think is an issue. Um, they do that with all like, mafia know? movies, though. Yes. And they also- which, which, yeah, like, you, you kind of can't make a mafia movie, like, that's really looking down on Italians because you're going to make them look sick. They're just going to be like, way too cool. <laughs> I forget if it was like a philosopher or a cinematographer but he was like you can't make an anti-war movie because every time you show war movie it's gonna look it's gonna look cool pretty much yeah (laughs) like people are gonna be like man that's kind of badass i mean there are a few there there are some that are really bad but there are no italian movies where you're like oh those guys really suck yeah like like, they're always like they kind of always make them funny and stuff i've had two events in the last couple weeks that have really made me like keen to this one well, really three, which another one is a WWE thing. But in the last two weeks, I've had one, my fiance is watching this show SWAT. It's on Netflix, right? It's got the one guy from Criminal Minds, um, mm-hmm. the bald guy. And they're like, there's SWAT team in LA. And I was like half watching it really like in and out of the room. And I hear them be like, yeah, the Italians are doing this. And I was like, no what? Way. And I like kind of pop in and I look. And they're like, yeah, the <laughs> I forget what their name was. But they were like, yeah, the DeMafia family is really taking this city. To-. I was like, wait, 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 what the fuck mm-hmm. are they saying? And they were like, that wasn't actually the name. But no, they like dead ass had an Italian like mafia, like a 1960s mafia type. On the show that they're trying to like take down. I'm like, what the hell is that? No class. Why are they stressing that they're Italian again? Is uh is the Rizzler Italian? <laughs> I think he is, but I'm just not, one segment. I just want to go one segment. I'm not hundred percent sure. About it. AJ and Big Justice are yeah, for sure. And their last name is I feel like that's why their Italians are looked down upon because of people uh, who are because making of the clowns guys? of themselves on TikTok. Not the Rizzler, though. I don't, the Italian. Yeah, but they're not making clowns about the fact. Well, I guess they have Cousin Angelo who eats Parmesan cheese or whatever on there. That yeah. doesn't help. Yeah, I can't really stand those guys. Every every uh, AJ and Big Justice and Rizzler like, side character is the worst. Oh, yeah. Like Jersey Joe and <laughs> Cousin Angelo. Where these and, guys come from? They got a whole cinematic And then they have now. like these people that sometimes... <laughs> They always have these people who I feel like are in the show that like, they're just like, yeah, we're here with so-and-so today. Like as if I should know them. And I'm like, who the hell are these guys? It's like their neighbors. They just like own a restaurant. Yeah. The street. No, but they're like characters too. They're like, oh, these guys. And I'm like, what the hell is going on right now? I don't know what the hell, like, who are these people? I mean, the craziest part is that their AJ and Big Justice are from Florida. And the Rizzler's in New York. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, yeah, we're in Jersey now. Like, they just, they're traveling hundreds of miles. Yeah. (laughs) Could you imagine? TikTok. These people have traveled more than former presidents have. I don't know about that. What do you mean? What about, what about, they travel more than freaking Abraham Lincoln have just to see the Rizzler. I don't know about that. Eh, Well, maybe. How far do you think Abe Lincoln was making it back in the day? No cars. They had they had bought California by then, right? Yeah, I'm sure he was making it to the West Coast. He did not make. He it was to getting the West around. Coast. He did not make it to the West Coast. They had trains. 
Dom, you know what? Uh, Back trains, to the Italian thing quick. I wanted to tell you, all right, trains, cool. Yeah, you got me there. You got me on trains. <laughs> I forgot about those sons of bitches. <laughs> Damn it, I forgot about railways. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Dom, the second, the second anti-Italian American discrimination that I faced was on Halloween, I had one costume with my fiance for Saturday night, but she worked Friday night and my friends wanted to go out Friday night too. So I didn't know what to put on. And I I just put on like a golf outfit. Like I was just wearing a hat and a polo and pants and a golf glove. I was like, all right, I'm a golfer, whatever. Mm -hmm. So nothing about my costume would say that I'm an Italian person, right? Except for that... Me personally am an Italian person with a mustache, right? Uh huh. This guy walks up to me in the bar and like he just kind of bumps into me. He's in like a boxer outfit and like he's like, oh, hey, you look like and like I've been getting like Bryson DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka all night, like because I was wearing golf stuff, like, oh, haha, like whatever, golfer. He goes, you look like M Mussolini. <laughs> I was like, the dictator oh Mussolini? God. From like World War II, he's like, yeah, you look just like Mussolini. <laughs> I was like, How? what the fuck is that supposed to mean? That is a crazy thing to say. And then his girlfriend came over and she was like, oh my God, yeah, he does look like Mussolini. And I was like, all right, fuck you. And they pulled up a picture of Mussolini. And obviously it doesn't look anything like me, but they're like, yeah, you're Italian, right? And I was like, all right, I'm leaving. And I just walked away. Like... The the anti Italian American discrimination right now is insanely high. Yeah, it's it's gone way too far at this point. I'm kind of sick and tired of it. The uh, that that's an insane thing to say to somebody. What are you doing? Pulling up a picture of Mussolini right now? <laughs> no, I know who that is. I know who that is. No, I know, but I, I yeah, but do you know what he looks like? Yes, offhand? I know what he looks like. Have you ever seen the picture of his building? No, what's his building? Look up his building. This guy doesn't look anything like me. Look up this building. Look up Mussolini building. It's got his face on. You guys go. It. And it's the scariest thing ever. Look it up if you're listening, folks. If you go on the WSR Instagram page, <laughs> at WSR, oh my God. Yeah, it's like. Holy shit. Terrifying. If you go on the WSR Instagram page, at WSR Radio, you'll find pictures of me and Dom. We don't look anything like Mussolini. So this is just culturalist, right? It's discrimination. It, it is. Is it, it is. not? You're That's like me walking right. up to a German person and being like, hey, you look like Hitler. <laughs> is it not? They literally are the same. Like they were both dictators yeah. in World War II. Yeah. No, yeah. They're both evil people. You can't, you can't say that. We're about part somebody. of the Axis forces. Yeah. You yeah. really can't say that about anybody except an Italian person. Like that's like, oh, terrible. Okay. You're probably gonna, yeah. All right. What the hell is that? Yeah, like a actually, there was. I'm not a violent person, but there was a thought through my mind that I was like, honestly, if I punch this guy in the face, I think I would be might be able to get away. I would with be it. right. Hate crime, but like hate speech. I was like, I I'm I'm a I'm a peaceful person. Like, but I was like, this guy kind of does deserve to get punched in the mouth. Like, if he said this to a Jersey Italian or some guy who put his fingers like that together or really like Tommy DeVito or if something he said like that, that to Jersey Joe. He probably would have got punched in the mouth, right? Mm-hmm. If he said that to Jersey Joe, it would be over. It would be... <laughs> like that. He it would be over like kneecaps. that. He would bring the boom. He would bring, he would bring the boom to him. To his kneecaps. So then, Dom, the third part of Italian anti-Italian American discrimination is the D'Angelo family in WWE NXT. And the <laughs> Luca Crucifino is a wrestler in the WWE. He's in NXT right now. He's with, he's part of the D'Angelo family uh, faction. The reason I know a lot about him is because he's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He went to Montour High School. He was second in the state in wrestling, very talented athlete, played at Duquesne University, played football. I played with him for three years. And very good guy. And he was on the North Shore Station podcast. And he was on one of our past podcasts. Me and Dom did interview him. I almost forgot about that. He is part of this faction called the D'Angelo family. 
They're just a mob family. And, and you've sent like, me a clip. It's it's uh, beyond parody. It's a caricature. It is. Yeah. yeah, it is a character. That's a great way to put it. Like he literally talks like Tony Soprano. And like, I understand that sometimes people do talk like that. And I appreciate Luca because he doesn't actually like he doesn't really lean into the voice at all or like do a, an accent, whatever. I don't even between me and you. I don't even know if he's actually Italian, but <laughs> anyways, <laughs> Um, just me the main you. guy is like, oh yeah, let me get some. He, the, there was one clip where he was like, hey guys, I'm gonna take you to the back fridge and show you some cabo gol. I got this fresh cabo gol. I got some fresh cuts here, huh? And they open the fridge and there's a guy tied up in there. And then they're like, oh, this is the wrong fridge. I'm like, all right, hold on, that's kind of fucked up, is it not? I I, I think that it's the character names are the worst part. It's guy hey, Silvio. Hey Sil, get over here. Yeah, he was on the phone with some guy in Philly. He was like, the guy on the phone's like, "Hey, Tony D, you coming to you coming to Philly and you don't tell the family what the hell's going on?" I was like, "All right, come on, guys." And he was like, "Silvio, Silvio, relax, I'm coming." I was like, "This is bullshit. And this they- is absolute bullshit. It's a ripoff of The Sopranos, which is a ripoff and a, <laughs> and discrimination of my culture." That's deep. You you had a real you have a real solid argument there. You have a three three layered argument for why yes Italians are the most discriminated race in the world. And you know what's <laughs> probably not in the <laughs> I'm even, kidding. I'm, I'm I kidding. I wouldn't even come close. I wouldn't even come close <laughs> to saying that. I'm kidding. But I would say they're very discriminated against in. America right now. Maybe I shouldn't even say discriminated against, but it's like made to be a joke. And I got on Fortnite with some of my friends the other day. I was like, how do you guys feel about this? That Italian, I think Italian American discrimination is at an, a high in 30 years. It hasn't seen this type of high since, you know, 30 years ago. And they said, I think it's good. I like where it's at right now. What the hell did we do? You can't go any further. Why? What did we do that, that caused us to deserve this? I feel like everybody loves pizza. Everybody loves pasta. Everybody loves the Sopranos. Mm-hmm. What did we do wrong? Al Capone. Do we have it too good? Maybe I think Italians have too, it too good. The people were too bad at the beginning, maybe. Yeah, I guess. But hey, a, a few bad seeds don't make a bad crop. No, you're right. You're right. I think I just made up that uh, saying, but I like that one. Two one six eight five nine eight six nine nine. Thank you for listening to Behind Enemy Lines. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk, the Monday Night Matchup. Dom, what is it? We forgot to talk about it once again. It is. That's a staple on this show. Behind Enemy Lines, our Monday Night Preview for tonight: the Houston Texans visiting the Dallas Cowboys. Texans are seven and a half point favorites. Over under forty two and a half. I'll take the, ooh, I don't know. That's tough. 42 and a half with Cooper Rush at quarterback. I'll take the over. I think the Texans are going to score and Cooper Rush is going to make it happen a little bit. 42 is so low. Spread is. Yeah, seven and a half. 42 and a half is so low, but the Dallas Cowboys team, like I said, only scored six points last week. It reminds me of the Steelers offense last year. I'm taking the under here. All right, so me and Dom have differing picks. Let us know which one of us you go with, and good luck. I don't know if you want to listen to us anymore on bets, but hey, no matter which one of us you go, you got to listen to one of us, right? And you're going to be right one way or the other. This has been Behind Enemy Lines. I'm Luke Strazio. That's Dom Farrow. Thanks for joining us. New episodes Mondays at 10 a.m. on WSRR Radio. Preceding program is a Styles Rebel Radio.com production.